3.7 HD2. Jeff Kooner, Boston's Bulldozer. We're now joined by Wayne Allen Root. He is a former Libertarian vice presidential nominee. Uh, he's a successful small business entrepreneur. Uh, a man who's uh, been successful in business. He writes a very, very good column. His latest book is The Ultimate Obama Survival Guide, How to Survive, Thrive, and Prosper During Obamageddon. Uh, his piece on the IRS scandal is absolutely superb. He hit the, it hit the nail right on the head. Mr. Root, thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Good morning. Good, good morning, uh, Mr. Root. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, hey by I, the way, there's a couple, couple things you missed in my description I think are really important to this interview. Sure. Number one, I want to make sure everybody listening knows I was the Libertarian vice presidential nominee, but I'm back to the Republican Party. I endorsed Mitt Romney on Fox News last year, and uh, I am a true blue Republican who may be running for U.S. Senate as a Republican against Harry Reid in 2016 here in my home state of Nevada. Oh, so, God bless you. Want to make sure everybody knows that. And I'm Obama's college classmate, which is a very important part of the story we're about to talk now, about. That's exactly. Now, I, um, uh, Mr. Root, I've been reading your stuff over the years. I read that piece that you wrote about your experiences being Obama's <laughs> classmate, and we'll get to that in a second. You believe that you were the target of the IRS scandal. And as you brilliantly point out, this is not just going after Tea Party groups, it is a criminal conspiracy to lash out, persecute, silence Obama's critics and political opposition. What happened to you? Well, let's start with the fact that I was Obama's college classmate and, and uh, you know, my mom taught me always be honest and everything. So when I started being asked about being Obama's classmate at the media, because as you know, I'm in the media a lot, I just answered honestly. Never saw him there, never heard of him, never met him, don't know anybody who ever saw him or met him. You know, that started in 2007, when I ran for the Libertarian presidential nomination and then won the VP nomination in 2008. And everywhere I went, I didn't talk about it. The press immediately asked me, did you know Obama if he was your classmate? And so all I did was honest answer, uh, answer honestly, never knew him, never met him, never saw him. Well, you know that story got under Obama's skin. It's not like he didn't notice. I was running on a presidential ticket against him in 2008, and I was in the media nonstop saying there's something strange about this guy's story because I knew everyone at Columbia, and nobody ever met this guy. Don't you think we might have a Manchurian candidate here? Something's wrong. So right off the bat, you know that I was noticed, if not by Obama himself, certainly by Valerie Jarrett, David Axelrod, Rahm Emanuel, and people around him, and I'm convinced that you're talking about a guy who plays rough with Chicago thug politics, you're talking about a guy who plays dirty, you're talking about a guy who sees someone one time with terminal cancer on Fox News, Jeff, one time, kiss him and Obamacare, and that guy comes home and he's got an IRS audit. So when you realize I was in the news thousands of times, and I was on Fox News a hundred times in a three-year period, and, and often really viciously going after Obama, calling him a socialist, saying he's going to destroy the American economy, and saying if he was my classmate, it's funny, I never saw him and no one I know ever saw him, and I've even interviewed professors who say he was never in their classes, and that's impossible if he went there. You know that they marked me for extinction with the IRS. So the first smoking gun I could tell you with my IRS experience is, I'm a unique case, it became personal to Obama, I got under his skin, and I think he personally, or the White House personally, gave the order to go after me. So I think that I have a real key to this case. I could prove there's motive, and why they would have gone after me was no coincidence. That's the first step. So, now, okay, so uh, we're talking with Wayne Allen Root. Uh, Mr. Root, so now, all right, so the IRS comes after you. They audit you. What happens? Well, you know, we don't have time on this show for me to give you every detail. Let's just say it was the most vicious, over-the-top audit my accountant's ever seen. My accountant's father was an IRS officer his whole career. My accountant's dealt hundreds of times at the IRS. He never in his entire life saw anything like this and said, Wayne, I can't handle it. They're out to get you. There's no question this is political. You've got to go hire the best law firm in the country that deals with IRS audits because they're going to try and destroy you. You know, I've had several conversations, and the basic gist was, Everything Mr. Root deducted, we're crossing out, and he owes us $100,000. And he said, Wayne, that's for one year. 
They'll go back seven years and wipe you out. You'll owe them a million dollars. They're even crossing out your home mortgage deduction. I said, what do you mean by that? How could they cross out my home mortgage deduction? He said, Wayne, they don't care. They're just trying to destroy you or distract you because you write too much bad stuff about Obama, and they want to ruin your life and make it so that you can't write anything anymore. They want to silence you. So I went out and got the best tax law firm in the country. They took the case away from the Las Vegas IRS. <clears throat> they immediately brought it to California where the tax law firm is based. They took it straight to tax court where a judge would rule on it, not an IRS personnel who's prejudiced and biased and got orders from the president. They took it away from the IRS, give it to a judge. The judge immediately threw it out and said every deduction is legal, and Mr. Root is 100% right, and that's it. I won. Jeff, five days later, new IRS audit. Okay, this is it. This is it. So they laugh it out of court. Yes. It's laughed out of court. And five days five later. Da I'm reading the piece. I was just incredible. Five <laughs> days later, the IRS comes back with a second attack. Take it from right. there, Mr. Root. Well, the second attack was the same thing. My, my lawyer called their office and said, I don't think you guys realize you're breaking your own law. The law says if you audit someone for two years in a row, which they did, that one audit was a two-year audit, and it comes up that he doesn't owe a dime, you can't audit them again. So you've actually made a mistake, and you probably didn't even, he was trying to be nice, he said you probably didn't even realize that Mr. Root just won in court five days ago. It was so soon, it was so recently, you probably haven't even gotten notice that Mr. Root won. So it's obviously a mistake that you're auditing him again. Well, the guy told my lawyer off on the phone, basically said, screw you, it's no mistake, and you are being audited, and I don't care about the law, and hangs up the phone on him. Sends me a note and says, your lawyer says we can't do this, so you're right, I've closed the case, you owe us $200,000. <laughs> So my lawyer said these guys are a joke. It's obviously you're on the president's enemies list. They're trying to ruin you. They're trying to distract you. Let's just take it once again to California, take it away from them, and, and you'll win. We did. We were winning again. And my lawyer called me and actually said, I think we're pretty much wrapped up because they've looked at this for six months again, and they can't find anything you've ever done wrong. You're in the clear again, but I don't have any official answer yet. A few days go by, Jeff, and then the thing happened that I think is the smoking gun. My lawyer called me, this is now about another two weeks later, and he says, guess what? I said, what? He says, do you have a friend in the White House? And I said, what, what do you mean a friend in the White House? I mean, that's exactly how I said it. My mouth dropped open. I said, I have no friends in the White House. He said, Wayne, something just happened that never happens, and I've been doing this for decades. And I know, you know, all the tax lawyers in the country that I've asked around, it doesn't happen. One of the most important IRS officials in the country has called your auditor and told him to close your case right away. They don't want it anymore. And he said, Wayne, that call has to come from the White House. Top IRS officials don't get involved in local cases. Why would he even know about your case? Why would he want to close your case? Do you have any idea? Did you ask a senator to intervene? And I said, I have spoken to no one. He said, Wayne, somebody in the White House wanted to help you. <laughs> and I said to my lawyer, hey, listen, there's no one in the Obama White House that wants to help me. Obviously, there's some big scandal brewing involving the IRS, and they want to kill my case because my case is tied to it. That's what I said to him. Two weeks later was when the IRS scandal broke in the news. Two weeks later. My case absolutely positively bothered them, scared them. They were panicking. They said, what if the news media snoops into Wader's case and they find out Obama's fingerprints or the White House's fingerprints are on this case? Let's kill it. Let's get rid of it. I know that's what happened. Anybody could figure that out. Any liberal, Jeff, who wants to say to me, Wayne, you're being exaggerative. You're being paranoid. Really? Has the head of the IRS ever called your auditor and told him to close a case? Why would he know about your case 3,000 miles away? Why was that call made, and who told that IRS big shot to call and make that call? So that's the second smoking gun, Jeff. And the third one is Judicial Watch, which is probably the leading government watchdog in the country, took on my case after all this was over. They said this looks suspiciously like an order from the White House to intimidate somebody, and let's get to the bottom of it, and let's demand every file with your case. Every single file and correspondence and phone call and email under the Freedom of Information Act and the IRS has 30 days to respond. And we did. And that was August 7th of last year. It's been over half a year and the IRS has stonewalled 
and stalled and refused to comply with the law. They had 30 days. It's been seven months. They have no interest in handing over any of my files. They're hiding I'm something. telling you, Jeff, I've got the key to this case. This was ordered by the president because I got under his skin, and he wanted to make my life miserable. Um, 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 we're talking with Wayne Allen Root. He is a columnist. Uh, he's also an author. His latest book is The Ultimate Obama Survival Guide, How to Survive, Thrive, and Prosper During Obamageddon. Uh, Mr. Root, let me ask you then this final question. You believe that Obama was ultimately behind this criminal conspiracy to silence, intimidate, and muzzle his political opponents. Yeah, I mean, I've got a narrative that either the Republican Party's afraid to put forth or they're too stupid to put it together. But, you know, I'm kind of a chess match guy, and I think five steps ahead. And I'm telling you, this is so much bigger, Jeff, than the media understands or the media wants to understand because they're all on Obama's side. And it's so much bigger than the Republicans in Congress understand. This wasn't about a few tea parties. Let me tell you what happened. In 2010, the media has made everybody forget that the Tea Party's produced the greatest victory in the history of politics. More House members, more Senate members, more governors, and more state legislators were elected Republican than any time in history. This was the most magnificent victory, and everybody's already forgotten that, because they poisoned and they demonized the name Tea Party, and they've made you forget. And Obama, he didn't forget, he knew. He got together with the IRS, what, 157 times? during his first term, more than his Secretary of State, more than Homeland Security times four, more than Treasury, even though the economy was going under. All he wanted to do was meet with the IRS. And what were they planning? They said, we can't get reelected if we allow this to ever happen again. So we are gonna destroy and take down all of our conservative critics, starting with the Tea Party. But it's also gonna be Wayne Root, and Dr. Benjamin Carson, and Sarah Palin's family, and uh, Catherine, uh, what's her name? Catherine, I think it was Engelbright, <laughs> who is uh, a gal who started a Tea Party in, I believe, Iowa. In her whole life, she'd never have contact with the government or the IRS. Suddenly, 15 government agencies contacted her and, and took on her business out of the blue, including the IRS and including other government agencies like OSHA that wanted to shut her husband's shop down. Come on, guys. Yeah, I, w I may have been born yesterday, but I wasn't born in the last five minutes. This is, a, this is a criminal conspiracy like organized crime. This is the Gambino crime family with a widespread conspiracy to destroy their opposition, to make sure you couldn't have rallies, couldn't have passion, couldn't have intensity, to, to totally disrupt and destroy the opposition's attempt to raise money. Tea parties couldn't raise money because they weren't given nonprofit status and because they were so distracted from answering questions like, what prayers do you say at the beginning of your meeting? Let us see your last year of Facebook posts. Hey, folks, no one has time to do that and run a campaign. So they effectively neutered the Tea Party, which means Barack Obama stole the 2012 election with a criminal conspiracy. We have been talking with Wayne Allen Root. He is a former Libertarian vice presidential nominee. He's now back with the Republican Party. He may, I hope, be the next challenger against Harry Reid in Nevada. He's also uh, the author of several books. Uh, one of them is a bestseller, The Ultimate Obama Survival Guide, How to Survive, Thrive, and Prosper During Obamageddon. Mr. Root, thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report, and keep up the great work, my friend. Thanks, Jeff. And my website's rootforamerica.com. If you want all my commentaries for free, you get them all the time at rootforamerica.com. Pleasure to be on anytime, Jeff. God bless. God bless you, sir. Rootforamerica.com, R-O-O-T, foramerica.com. He nailed it. This was a criminal conspiracy which helped Obama get reelected on false premises. He is an illegitimate president. He stole the election of 2012. What are the Republicans waiting for? Get this guy in front of Congress. 617-266-6868 is the number. Jeff Kuhner, the voice of the resistance, back with your calls. Exercise.